Welcome back, everybody. We are in our final phase in our last part of this series here. We're going to be going into Substance Painter and getting all our maps, our normal maps, ambient occlusion, curves, and all that. And then we're going to do our textures. And, and then finally, at the end of it, I will export it out to Sketchfab and we'll touch base in there and show you how to. Uh, manipulate some of the lights and stuff like that with Sketchfab so you can show off your cool starfighter to all your friends or co-workers or potential client whatever so uh, first off I thought I'd show you this uh, this render real quick I did a key shot earlier I thought I'd show it off uh, show you all the detail that you can get out of it just off at of the very first tutorial of the series we did uh, it comes out beautifully inside Keyshot. I didn't do a real fancy background for this one, but you can see in the cockpit and see all the detail. And I just thought I'd show that off so you can see what it looks like out of Keyshot. So, without further ado, we're going to actually step back just a bit. We're going to go back to ZBrush real fast, and we're going to fix the mistake I made earlier. And uh, because if you remember, I built the model with on basically sitting on its butt. And let me load him up. Actually, we're going to import the two files that we exported out. So that would be Fighter Low. And we can drag him out. And as you can see, he's sitting on his tail. So T for edit there. And I can turn the floor on. And you can see what's going on. See? We build him right on his tail end. So go under Subtool. And we're just importing the ones that we exported. So this is a quick and easy fix. I want to do an append, do polymesh 3D, go down to polymesh 3D, and now import your high version that you exported. Give it a second, boom. It's now brought them both in there. No problems whatsoever. Go to deformation and change your rotate to X. Take off the Z click on it and just do a negative 90 okay that fixes one and then repeat to active Oop. repeat to other there you go now all you gotta do is go in here and export each one of them I've already did it earlier so I'm not gonna do it and that's it you don't have to fix UVs nothing uh, you don't even have to fix the ID mask. Everything is fixed. So just export it out like this and you will be fine. And give me a minute and I'll see you inside Substance Painter. Alright, we are back here in Substance Painter. This is version 1.5. Make sure you have the latest version here as well as your uh, graphics card is up to date. Uh, it's very finicky if you're not up to date it'll, even, it'll tell you that it's not up to date and please update it so it's always recommended you update it uh, let's go ahead and oh, do uh, new under the file menu and if uh, you've seen previous videos with Substance Painter they changed the UI around uh, I've gotten pretty used to it it's nicer I got a bigger viewport for the the model so it's really nice so back to opening our project here let's select our mesh and I'm going to select the one I fixed here, so it's low 2. And we'll add our fighter ID that we created. And document resolution, depending on your graphics card. I've got an older one, so it's, it still runs really good at 2048. So we're going to keep it like that. Keep an open GL for the normal map. And click OK. And it should bring a model right in. Boom. A uh, quick overview on your controls. Uh, it's not like in ZBrush. It, it will go around with a mouse and all that, but you have to hold down the Alt key, and then you can manipulate it. And then if you do center mouse wheel, it'll zoom in and out. If you hold down mouse wheel, it'll pan it. And then if you do a shift and right mouse, that'll change your light. That'll rotate the light around. Okay, so it's just a quick overview of the controls there to get you caught up if you're not familiar with Substance Painter. Really awesome program. So we've got our low res model in here and what we need to start off with is bake all our maps 
off of our high resolution uh, model. So all you have to do is go into the texture settings here. It should already be opened up. And you go hit Bake Texture. It'll open up this display. Uh, we don't need ID. You can click off that. We'll, we don't need thickness. We're not going to do any uh, subsurface scattering or anything like that. That's what that's good for. Uh, but we do want all of these other ones here. Uh, you're going to want an output size of 4096. And then let's bring in our high res model. And mine happens to be high too. Okay. And you can pretty much leave all these other settings just at default. Uh, if you want, you can always do subsampling. Uh, careful, uh, ambient occlusion takes a long time to process, so if you start subsampling, you're going to be there for a little while. So we'll just do none for now and go ahead and click Big Texture. The normal generates relatively quickly. Uh, should be spitting one out here in just a second. There it is. It's already projected nicely onto our model. Uh, now the ambient occlusion, that's usually the one that takes the longest out of all of them. But really, I mean, you're only looking at maybe less than a minute bake time, so that's great. I mean, can't even bake cookies in a minute. If you can, let me know how. And let me go ahead and pause the video. Okay, we're all done baking there. It only took about a minute or so. It's not too bad. So I didn't want to make you sit there and wait for it. And we can take a quick look around the model here and see what it's done. A little bit of interesting artifacting just from, uh, I believe that's probably from ambient occlusion right there. Because we've got those two meshes kind of tight to each other. I'm sure that made for interest in uh, computer in there for the computer so but otherwise it did a really nice job you know it's not going to be hyper detailed like our original model but I I think we're going to get some nice results out of what we have here so in our texture set here let's go ahead and if you click select ID and look for that uh, multicolored one that we did there's your fighter ID right there plug that in and that will come into play here shortly. And what we want to do, we want to add two more channels. Right now it's uh, base color, height, roughness, and metallic. We want to add two more channels to it. We're going to add opacity, and we're also going to add emissive. Okay, so this way we can have, uh, with the emissive, we can have some glowing off our exhaust port back there and then our opacity will come into play for a canopy and we can go ahead and get that started here first of all on this layer one here go ahead and add a fill and turn everything off but just uh, opacity and keep that all the way to white alright that's just setting the opacity for everything so this way yeah it, trust me it, it, it helps out if you have one that does a total fill on opacity and then it'll work just fine in other programs if you don't do that you'll end up uh, I've done that before with one of my other starfighters and when I sent it out to Marmoset uh, everything the the only thing that was visible was the canopy everything else was invisible because it didn't project a make a map for everything else it just did it just for the canopy so trust me, that's that's why I did that. So we're gonna make a, we're gonna make this uh, texture and super simple. Open up your smart materials down here, and basically all these are are just folders with uh, settings and effects and already built into a big old folder. I mean this is a lot like Photoshop basically and works in layers. So I want you to go down here real quick. Uh, wait, yeah, glass visor and then drag him and put him right above the that bottom layer there okay and we don't want the whole thing so all you gotta do is do a right click add black mask and then if you go to this icon right here it's called geometry decal click him 
and then click on this box here that's for separated that's for objects so anything that is separate within the mesh does it is not attached or merged to anything it'll that's the only thing it'll isolate so we just click on the canopy which is not connected to anybody it's just by itself so now we've generated a mask just for the canopy so we can click off that go back to your brush there and it and let me open them him up here and he's just like two basic layers there's nothing too fancy about him but you're probably asking okay well how come I can't see through it well that is because under viewer settings you have to change your shader it right now is on PBR metal rough which doesn't support transparency but if you go to the second one that's PBR metal rough with alpha blending click it and there you go you can now see through see through it perfectly and look inside and see your cockpit so I am I want to do one little thing here with our canopy want to add uh, just a, a little bit of variety over that uh, view screen or over the canopy this is, this is kind of cool so what I want to do is just click on glowing edges there it actually has an emissive channel if you didn't know it'll put an emission right above here so this will kind of glow just a little bit which is kind of cool so uh, click on that little plus and then add a fill okay and we just want to turn everything off but the rough okay and you can control that if you wanted and change the roughness of it but what we're going to do is click on the roughness instead and come down to this little little it's called brick generator click on it and change your projection to trilinear or tri planner and then change your UV scale and we should start seeing something here we'll add a cool little kind of grid pattern over the over everything and then we'll just go down to our bevel here and we'll decrease it just a little bit on both of them let me uh, Makes for kind of a cool effect there. It's almost a almost a wireframe type thing. It's kind of cool. I like it. I thought that was kind of cool, so we're going to stick with that. All right, so now that we're done with the canopy, we're moving on here. Let's look under our smart materials here. Like I said, this is super quick and easy to do. You can get highly detailed stuff really quick just using these smart materials I mean someone's already taken the time and put them all together you might as well use them and I am looking for is it that one I think it's steel scratched hold on I think so alright so we'll click and drag him just above glass visor We'll see how he looks on here. Give it a second to process. That's what that little uh, red bar is down there. Takes no time to process. Quick and easy, just like that. And like I said, everything works in layers. So we put this over over everything else. So it's affecting our uh, canopy. And if you don't want it to do that, you could just add white mask and do the reverse, like we did earlier. And change him to black so this way there we go it's kind of hard to see I know but it did it took it off so now that uh, scratch steel will not affect our canopy at all now so let's uh, keep on building up layers let's uh, go find this one called machinery click and drag him put him above here Give it a second to process. Alrighty. Now we want to put a mask on there so we can isolate exactly what we want. Let's go add mask with color selection. Okay, fix that. And now we can use our ID mask, which is already 
in the color selection thing there. So all you got to do is do pick color, switches over to color selection, and here's our very muddy uh, projection or uh, color ID. So click on this darker blue up here, or whatever color it ended up being for you. It's always going to be a little different for everybody. And this just puts a little, little peel and paint all over the place. So you can play with the tolerance if you want to bleed it into other areas. Entirely up to you. You can always pick another color if you want. You can add the that one too, and you can make you can have more paint on it if you wanted. But I'm gonna do without that. Don't want to get in excess here too much. So let's go ahead and add another material above everything. And each uh, each one of these are uh, you can you can adjust them. As you can see, this mask has a built-in effect, which is called Mask uh, Builder with a lot of different uh, options in here. You can go in there and fix like the noisiness and the range, the noise scale. It, there's a lot of options in there that you can just go in and play with. We're not going to dive into that too much. Uh, just want to keep this short and sweet for you here. But let's go into Smart Materials again and look for Tire Rubber. And we'll put him above here. And go ahead and add a white mask. Oop, actually, black mask. All right, so now we can select, do some uh, color selection here. If you go up here and click on this part right here, symmetry, so anything you do on one side will affect the other side, just like in ZBrush. So, the same thing applies when you're applying mask. So, this time I want to, I'm going to change that back to a white and then change him to the UVs. And you remember when I talked to you in the last video about those poly groups and all that, and they made nice UV shells. Well, you remember the inside of the wing, and I said, well, I might make it a different material. Well, watch this. Boom. We just made that uh, a rubber material on the inside there. And I might uh, even do that to part of the gun. Why not, right? You can even go in, let me zoom in here a little bit so I can see them a little better. You can change it over to uh, just the polygon, and you can just uh, manipulate just the polygons themselves. Click here, 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 here. Cool. Let's see, I wonder if we could do that with some of this up here. Make it kind of wrap around. Let's turn our decal off so we can see what we did. Ah, oh, I like that. That turned out pretty sweet. Okay, let's do one more material here. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's go ahead and get another smart material. And we will make a steel. Give it a second to process. Go ahead and add a black mask again. You know, it's just like a layer mask inside uh, Photoshop, if you're familiar with that. See, we'll go back here to our thruster, and we will set up a, another decal there. Let's do UVs here. I will make that inner one here all steel. All right, why don't we go back to the rubber tires and we'll make this outer one all rubber. Cool. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and swing around here. Go to our guns. Or they could be antenna. Oops, I'm on the rubber. Hold on. Change it to steel. There we go. And we'll turn him off.
turned out pretty cool. I'm liking it. All right, let's go ahead and we will set up our uh, last layer here. We're going to do an emissive on our thruster back here. And let's see. I'm going to turn that off for a second and get that out of the way. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to click on him, add a new layer, bring him to the top of the stack. And we'll just call him thruster. Let's see, add fill layer. And we'll turn everybody off but our emissive. Okay. We're going to change him all the way to a kind of a blue. Okay. So just like before, we can toss on a black mask and turn on our geometry decal, UV. And if you remember, I told you, make sure you make a unique poly group just on the inside there and just click UV. Boom. It's right inside exactly where we want it. We don't have to do any painting or nothing. It's all done for us. All right, let's see if we can make that thruster pop just a little bit more. All right, get to this layer here. I want to add, see, another fill layer. Same thing. Turn everybody off. But the emissive, remember, is above it. So let's go ahead and change that color. Actually, we want we want to change the uniform here. Let's see, we'll just pick that one there. Let me change the scale of that just a little bit. Maybe try planner. That's fine. And if we go to, let's see, change this to emissive. Your particular layers here. And then change that over that blend layer to multiply. There we go. Now we got now we got that blue color bleeding in from below it. And let's go ahead and add a levels. And let's see if Oh, not base color. I want emissive. There we go. And it's just like another levels, just like a regular levels adjustment. Adds a little variety to it. Let's zoom in here so we can see. I may go to him, maybe lower that scale just a little bit. There we go. I like that. Adds a little variety to that emission there. All right, so really that's about it. Uh, like I said, you can go in and manipulate any of these layers. So let's go like to the machinery here. You can open up that folder and make sure we're at base color here so we can see everything. There we go. Go into the paint and you can adjust, you know, say like the dirty paint. We can maybe push that more into a red. And you can see it update on the fly. Clean paint. Let's see. Kind of up to you. So, but before we finish up here, I want to add one new level or layer, not level. And I'm gonna throw him under under the emissive channel. And this one's gonna be a quick, simple one here. Add a uh, fill, and we'll just take everything off but the color, and then open up, go to, click on your little textures here, find your curvature map that we baked uh, when just after we first came in here, click and drag him and put him over base color, okay, 
Now all you got to do on the main layer is change it to a multiply and it's just like a multiply function in Photoshop and let's see if we can uh, make him look a little better we'll just add a levels and we want to bring the whites over crushed it a little too much there. You'll have to tinker with it. There we go. Getting some of our lines back. But now we're getting some of, some of our uh, panel lines that we that kind of got washed away there. Really adds a lot to it. So I may go back and mess with paint one more time. Might change the color, bring him up just a little bit. And there you go. Took us no time to uh, get a very cool looking texture on our ship here. So go ahead and just save. Let it do its thing real quick. Okay. Uh, we can play with this a little more. We can, uh, not really going to manipulate it. Just hit, hold down shift, drag your camera or your background, and it's a right mouse button for this. Move the light around a bit to see things. If you go into viewer settings, you can turn on shadows. And you can also go post effects, hit activate, turn on anti leeson you can do glare, turn him on, usually I'll put him on uh, bloom, Let's see if we can get the sun to play here. pretty cool looking pretty good so now that we're done admiring our work there we'll go ahead deactivate post effects we'll turn off uh, shadow there everything is getting a little sluggish on me here and all we really need to do now is now export everything out and it is super simple in here to export this to sketchfab so all you got to do is just do file export textures and under the configuration drag it down there's now one little spot there for sketchfab uh, set up your export area And uh, we're just going to keep it simple. We'll keep it at uh, uh, the Sketchfab only allows for JPEG, so which is fine. That's usually all I ever do, anyways. Change your resolution up to 4096, and then all you got to do is click Export. Uh, it's going to what it's going to do now is it's going to raise the 
It's going to recompute everything for uh, your 4096 maps. It will uh, send out all the textures and it will also grab the model, pack them all together and zip it into a file and what it will do is it will send it straight to Sketchfab. Uh, once it's done baking all these textures, uh, another prompt will come up and it will ask you uh, to name it, description, and all that other jazz. And we'll see that here in just a second. It's almost done processing. And then it's just a matter of uh, once it uploads it to Sketchfab, you just go in and uh, edit, you know, some of the lights and all that. It's yeah, it's it's real simple. It's a, it's a lot less of a burden than going to Marmoset. So, and all you have to do is uh, when you first get in here, you have to uh, add your account, uh, user ID, and password. And then after that, it's you know it's quick and easy. So I'm just gonna. Starfighter 2. I already got one in there, so let me just uh, and Let's see, what else do I want to put in there? Yeah. That's good for now. And all you got to do is click Upload. It's packing it all into a zip file, and it's shipping it off to Sketchfab. So what I'm going to do now, I am going to pause this, and then we will go see it on the website. Be back in just a second. All right, here we are. Uh, we have successfully uh, gone to Sketchfab and it's already loaded up our model here this is just the the basic uh, shader that it throws in there but it already looks really really cool of course the only thing right now for some reason the transparency is not working correctly uh, I thought it was something that I did in this particular model just a mistake maybe I made, but no, it's doing it to all my models on Sketchfab, so I don't know if they're just tinkering with the code on the website. I'm not sure. I'll have to look into it because the transparency should work, and I should be able to see through that canopy, but I don't. So, so we'll uh, adjust all the other settings, and hopefully they'll get that figured out. So just go under 3D settings here. And mind you, you want to make sure you have a Sketchfab uh, account. It's free. Uh, there is a pro version with some other bells and whistles to it. I'm not sure what they are, but I'm sure they're pretty cool. Uh, but I just got the free account. And we just zoom in. This is a web-based uh, 3D viewer. So anybody with uh, on the Internet can come and take a look at your model. And you can see here, it did a really good job. The shader does a decent job. It looks almost just like in uh, Substance Painter. You can see our emission channel is working just fine. Uh, you can go in and adjust some of these settings over here on the left-hand side. Uh, let's see. We can go to Post-Process and Filters. And we can even add a little bit of chromatic aberration. And all that is is just baby, just basically uh, camera uh, artifacts, like you would have an actual digital camera or regular uh, film camera. And it's just kind of some bleeding around the edges, you know. That's the thing about digital, uh, making all these digital models. You don't have all these artifacts from real world things, so cool thing is they started adding them back in and it really gives a lot more realism to the to the images so we'll add just a little bit of that maybe do a little bit of a vignette turn on bloom maybe increase the radius or the intensity lower the radius a bit and we'll do some tone map in there turn him on I think I do yeah filmic does a really decent job it makes a kind of a high contrast model or a high contrast scene 
So let's see what else we got in here. Color balance I usually don't mess with. Uh, I think I'm good with post processing. You can actually under post pro you can turn sharpness on. That it's a little too extreme on the default. I just lower down just maybe just a touch of sharpness just to help those textures pop out a little bit more. And let's uh, go to lighten and lights on very bright. Uh, we may have to adjust some of them. Uh, go to each one of them and turn on Oh, every one of them seems to have cast shadow already turned on which is this little button right here. Okay, we'll go to each one here and maybe adjust the intensity a little bit. Some of the shortcuts are a little bit different on here. Alt will uh, rotate camera with the left mouse button. It's just a matter of learning each one. Each program, each program has a slightly different one. So I know I'll jump into programs stuck on the uh, same uh, shortcuts from the last one, and it does something totally opposite of what I want it to do. So we just need to still need to adjust. Maybe go back to scene. Go down to bloom. Maybe cut the threshold back a little bit. Want to find a nice. Come on. But it's still pretty cool that I could do this all on a web page. Alright, let's see. Light in materials. Uh, not a whole lot that we can really mess with in there. They've already been plugged in to where they need to. You can always uh, adjust them as needed. This is that uh, transparency here. Yeah, I tried to fiddle with it earlier. It's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be alpha blending. And we've got the right map in there and everything. So I'm not sure what's causing that. I'm thinking it's just uh, something on their end. I'm hoping. So I think that is about it. Uh, you could do a save view. And it'll give you a little grid of what it's going to look like. And save it. So this way, they'll see that preview before they click on the, there we go, that's what the preview is going to look like. And then save settings. And then you can exit back, oh, well dang nab it, I wanted the thumbnail in there. Yeah, like I said, I think they're tinkering with the code. So it, you know, it does take a second to load up there. Uh, you do have a few options in here. I don't think they're all loaded up from my model just yet. Uh, but you've got the the low, and then the SD and the HD. So SD usually looks really good. So usually just stick with that. You could do HD on the textures. So looks pretty cool. You could do go into a demo mode. And it'll cycle through everything while you rotate. So, pretty cool way to show off your model you just created. And I hope you guys uh, learned something out of this. Uh, learned from some of my mistakes and what to do, what not to do. And I hope you have fun. Definitely share uh, your results. I would love to see some of these uh, Sketchfab models. And uh, send a link to me. 
be happy to check it out. If you got any questions, let me know in the comments, or you can get with me on Facebook, Google Plus, uh, definitely on Zebra Central. So I'm um, pretty easy to get a hold of. So thanks for uh, watching the videos, and we will see you at the next one. Okay.